So I've got this comment from Mike MCG who wants to know how we can do an enemy AI system where the enemy character roams around the map and then when they see the player, they follow. Let's see if we can get that working. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Okay, the first thing I need to change is my typical standard easy game mechanic side scrolling view. I can see I've got my little sprite here stood nicely on the base, but to get this type of AI um, working, we're going to need an eight directional movement with some pathfinding. So give me one second while I flick this around. Okay, I've expanded, I've pushed the walls out and I have created an enemy which is basically just a red, a red little cube with some kind of sinister looking eyes at the bottom so we can tell which direction he's moving in. The green uh, player icon is still the same if I double click it it's just got its basic um, animation states. Okay so the first thing we need to do is get the player to be able to move around and the way we do that is with the eight directional behavior in the top down view. So we're going to add a behavior, we're going to click new behavior and we're going to go down until we see eight directions and we're going to add that on. Now, if we leave it as it is, it's going to go with the default bear, the default controls, which are the arrow keys. And if I play it, you'll be able to see that he kind of moves around the camera. Sorry, not the camera. The angle rotates based on what buttons we're pushing, which you might want, but I don't want that. So I'm going to disable that. So the way we're going to disable that is by coming over to the behavior properties on the left and we are going to change set angle from smooth to no and we are going to de uh, we're going to take away the default controls because i don't like moving around with arrow keys because it feels awkward to me so i'm going to program those in with the wasd keys and that's what we're going to do next so right click add an event and um, if you haven't already got the keyboard added you need to go back and double click in the layer and you need to add it and it's going to be under input here i've already got it in so it's not showing up but if you don't have the keyboard you are going to want to add that in there once you have the keyboard added go to keyboard and we're going to say on key is down and we're going to select w then you're going to copy that out three times more and we're going to change each one to the a s and d keys So now depending on which one of these keys is down, as the as the, the, the action here, the event says here, we're now going to simulate the uh, eight directional movement. So if we're pushing W, obviously we want the player to move up, so we're going to say player. And because we've added the behavior, this now, this eight directional section has been added. So we're going to say simulate control, so we're going to simulate pushing up. Then I want you to copy that down, double click it. And now when we push A, we're going to simulate left. We're going to drag it down. When we push S, we're going to simulate down. And then finally for D, if you guess right, then you are right. And now when we test it, we can move around with the WASD keys. And the player works just fine. And he's in his little idle state right there. Now we need to add some behaviors to the enemy. Because we want the enemy to move around when we're not within a certain range then we need to add that in and the way we're going to do that is with the behavior and we're going to add a new behavior and we are going to add pathfinding you will also need line of sight as well but for now let's add the path in fact let's add them all now let's just add pathfinding let's add line of sight there it is and we're also going to need move to so with these three added, we can get the enemy uh, sprite here to do pretty much whatever we want to do in terms of his own movement. So let's uh, go back to the event sheet and to keep this organized, let's create a group and let's call this enemy AI, because that's what it is. And now we want to go system and then we want to go on start of layout because when the layout starts, or when the level starts, we want the enemy to start calculating a path to move around the map. So we're gonna say enemy, and we're gonna say down here under pathfinding, we're gonna say find path. So the first thing we want him to do is find a path, but where do we want him to find that path to? And this is where you can really put anything you want in. If I just leave it at zero, zero for the moment, if we left it at that, when the level starts, he's gonna automatically find a path to this top left-hand corner. 
but he's not going to be able to get there because these walls that I have in place are solid. So he's not going to be able to pa pass through them unless, depending on the game you have, you want to set obstacles to custom, in which case you can add them in and basically say whatever you want to be an obstacle. You can, you can write that in the event sheet on the start of layout. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep these walls as the objects that he's not allowed to go through just to keep him within this area here. Um, and I'm going to work with that. Cell size, this is basically the room that he has to path, uh, pass through. So for example, uh, if I just copy out a bit of wall here, if I set my grid to 16 by 16, I show it that gap down the middle although you can clearly see that he is small enough to pass through there if the cell size here is bigger than that gap he's not going to pass through that he's basically going to say this is the amount of room needed for this guy to move through so because that's 16 by 16 these squares are the width is 16 but if you set this to 16 it still wouldn't work because you've got a border of minus one which takes kind of minus one off of each side. If I set that to zero then he would be able to pass through there no problems at all um, but bear that in mind when you're planning out routes that the cell size can affect the route that this uh, the enemy can take. Let's get rid of that and get rid of that. I'm going to keep the cell size at 16 because that's kind of the the width of my tiles here. Um, or are they they're 32 by 32 I think but either way the point you, you get the point it doesn't really matter let's get him to find a path somewhere so if you just want him to walk around kind of aimlessly within a level that within a kind of wilderness or outdoors in a field or around a village without bumping into things um, what you can do is set him to find a path if we say enemy so the X position is going to be enemy dot X so exactly where he's standing right now and then we're going to plus in a random number between minus 150 so that's 150 pixels to the left of him and 150 which is 150 pixels to the right of him so when the layout starts he's gonna automatically find a path somewhere between 150 pixels left and 150 pixels right and it's gonna pick that as the X position we can then say enemy dot Y plus random and again we're going to do the same thing minus 150 to 150 and that's going to get him to pick a path somewhere between 150 pixels above and 150 pixels below and it's going to pick that x and y position now we need to say add an event on the enemy we need to come down and we we need to say on path found so as soon as he finds this path what do we want him to do well we want to say add action and we want to say enemy and we want to say move along path. Now if we play it, he's going to go away and he's going to find his position, which was somewhere to the south there. But he rotated as well, which I don't like, so let's take that off. Let's uh, get rid of rotate, we'll get rid of diagonals. Um, we'll get rid of set angle on maximum speed as well and you can see his speed for maximum speed for move to and his maximum speed for pathfinding are, are different so you could effectively have him walking around at 100 pixels per set uh, per frame on oh, where's it gone on the pathfinding so when he's just idly walking around but then as soon as he sees you and switches over to move to when he starts moving towards you you can increase the speed there which is quite nice um, so let's try that again without the movements. Yep, there he goes, and he's found a path. Now, <clears throat> let's say, for example, he's here, and he picks a position which is up here, outside of the map, or inside one of the walls. Obviously, he's not going to be able to pass through the walls, so we need to account for that in the event sheet. So we need to add an event, and we need to say enemy, and we need to say on failed to find path. So if he can't find the path, then what I want to do is I just want to recalculate it again. So that will just loop infinitely over and over again. Every time he picks a position that he can't get to, he'll just do that, that recalculation and then away he will go. But because this is set to on start of layout, it means he's only going to do it once. So when the level starts, he's going to do it. So I'll show you. Does it, finds a spot, 
and then he just stays there for the rest of the game. So we need to put in some conditions that say, I need you to keep looking around. So when you get to a position, then you need to wait for a little bit and then find a new position. So we can do that by adding an event and we can say system and we can go down and we can say every X seconds. And now here's where you can kind of make it a little bit more varied. You could say every three seconds, find a new position, um, but I'm gonna say every random amount of seconds. So every random, and I want it to be somewhere between five, um, no, let's say somewhere between three and six. Every, somewhere between three and six seconds, I want him to recalculate that path. And I'm gonna pop that up there underneath on starter layout. So he's gonna calculate a path when the level starts and then every three to six seconds he's gonna do it again. When he finds his path, he's gonna move along it and if he can't find it, he's gonna recalculate it. There he goes. One, two, three, there he goes again. One, two, there he goes again. One, two, three, four, Right, there he goes again. Do you see what I mean? He's moving around by himself now, picking his little directions wherever he wants to go. Um, and then he, he'll stop and then recalculate and away he goes again, which is quite nice. Now he will just walk around there and uh, just do his thing. What we need to do with our player though, so we can go follow him is we need to add a behavior and we need to add the scroll to. Now we can follow this guy around and the camera will follow us as well. And it's as simple as that. You don't need to change anything. It simply just defaults to enabled. And that means that when we move around now, we can now take the camera with us, which is quite nice. And there's the guy doing his thing, moving around. Okay, enough of that. Now, what's gonna happen if the player, if the player, if the enemy sees the player? Well, there's a few things. We're gonna to need to stop a few commands and we're gonna to need to implement something else. So he's gonna go into a different state called chase. Um, you could do this with kind of like the state machines by creating groups that you can disable and enable based on what state he's in. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna keep it really simple um, and we're just gonna kind of code it right into the events. So the first thing we can do is we need to run check. We need to check to see if the enemy has line of sight to the player. So we can go enemy, because we added that line of sight, remember, that line of sight behavior, so it's gonna pop up in here. And you can check four things on this. You can check to see if he's got a line of sight between positions to an object, a ray intersected, which is ray casting, which we're not doing, and then to a position. So we need to see if he's got line of sight to an object, because we're an object. And that object is us, the player. An image point is optional, but we're just going to leave it at the zero default. If he has a line of sight to the player, then what do we want him to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is stop all of this pathfinding. So we're going to go enemy, and we're going to go down to pathfinding, and we are going to set enabled. Um, in fact, let's say pathfinding movement, we're going to stop, and then we're going to say enemy, and we're going to say pathfinding, where are you? Set enabled, disabled, disabled. Perfect, so now <clears throat> we need to determine what that line of sight is. And if you come over to the left here, you can see it in the properties. Again, obstacle solids range is 10,000 uh, pixels, which is basically the entirety of the map. So if I played it now, he wouldn't go anywhere because we have he already has line of sight to us. Even if I put us like way over here, he's still not gonna go anywhere because he still has line of sight. So he's got like basically 10,000 pixels worth of infinite line of sight, even if I put us right down here. I can't see him anyway. But here's the interesting thing, because his line of sight is blocked, where is he? Line of sight is blocked by solids. If I was to drag out this wall, so this could, for example, be just a house. In fact, let's make believe it's a house there now he's not going to see us so he's going to go about his day but then as soon as he sees me there he goes now he's stopped if i go back behind here he doesn't reactivate because we haven't coded that in yet so let's keep going let's see what we can do uh, first thing i want to do is change his line of sight strength so i don't want it to be 10,000. in fact let's just make it if these little squares are 16 by 16 if we make it about 150 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this here from him is about 160. So let's just say 150. 
The cone of view, 360, that means he will see in all directions. The cone of view starts out to the right here at 90 degrees, that's zero, and then it's uh, 90, 180, 270, 360. And then as he rotates, that changes. So we're gonna say 360 so he can see in all directions. Now, we can probably get a little bit closer to him without him worrying about it. Oh, he can't see me there. He's gonna move, yeah, so if I go too close, I've obviously gone through his line of sight now, so he's not going to move again. So back in the event sheet, we need to now determine what he's going to do when he has line of sight to the player. So we're going to stop the pathfinding and disable it, and we're going to say enemy, and we're going to set the move to. Um, we're going to say a move to object, and that object is going to be the player. And it can be direct or via waypoints, we're going to say direct. So now, when he sees us, he's going to run to us. Let's let him make his first move. Just down there. There he goes, and now he's chasing us down. However, oh, he's a bit too fast for me. I need to slow him down, he's too fast. To illustrate my next point, he needs to be slow. Slow and stupid. 100. Um, what was his speed here, 100? Okay, so he's not gonna change speed. In fact, if I make him 80 here, and then we can go 120. We just need to make sure that we're faster. Yeah, we're 200. Um, so let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So he's moving around, he can see me now. There he goes. Oh, if I could just not get stuck on buildings. So now he can't see me anymore. He's stopped chasing. And there he is chasing me again, because I've hidden behind the, uh, the wall. So, what do we want him to do when he can't see us anymore? Let's copy that block out. I just push Control C and Control V, and I'm just going to invert that statement. So, if he doesn't have line of sight to us, well, we can get rid of that. Um, we can go back, we can put this first, and we can say Set uh, Pathfinding Enabled. And then we can delete that, and we can just go back and copy that line of code in there, which is now find a path, basically randomly go back and do what you were doing again. So we're enabling the path finding. In fact, what I uh, think would be better is if I drag this up here at the beginning, because he's going to start the level without line of sight to us. So we need to be thinking in terms of he starts not being able to see us rather than what do we do when he's lost sight of us. So if he doesn't have sight of us, then we can call this um, event here the every three to five seconds. So you can go ahead and just click on the edge here, drag it underneath so it's nesting in this uh, block here. So if we don't have line of sight, then we can set the pathfinding enabled and then we can have the calculate route every three seconds um, and then i think what i can do here i think i might take out the stop on when he does have line of sight because i think just by disabling it uh, is going to be enough i think if we stop it it's going to cause some issues so let's let's try that and see if that works so there he is he's moving around can't see me at all now he can see me now he can't see me and now he's going back to his daily routine of moving around and that is how we do enemy pathfinding and chasing the player down when we have line of sight i hope that was useful if that was useful then go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up because it really helps the channel and if you haven't already subscribed please consider subscribing because again it helps the channel and keeps me motivated to make these tutorials so if you want to see more from me in the future then do both those things and I will see you in the next video. And also, before I go, for the 1% of you that are still watching at this point, if you've got any suggestions for future Easy Game Mechanic tutorials, then go ahead and leave them in the comments. And if I can do them, I will do them. And if you've left a comment before and I haven't uh, done the tutorial yet, it's not because I am blatantly ignoring you. I probably have just forgotten about it. So feel free to repost it and remind me with a gentle reminder. Um, and that's it for me. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. And go check out my other videos. Bye-bye.